Vietnam's military has always been one of Southeast Asia's strongest. The country has continuously poured big money into its defense industry. This is to combat foreign threats and ensure Vietnam is always at the top. One of these beneficiaries is none other than the country's Air Force. The Air Force is the 21st century modern battleground. Whoever controls the sky controls the battle. The biggest factor of an air force, however, is none other than their fighter jets. It is these equipments that combat other aerial forces and can even strike down both a country's navy and its land equipment. Fighter jets are basically the most essential piece of an air force. For Vietnam, their fighter jets are some of the most advanced in the entire Southeast Asian region. But as we saw over the past two decades, the rise of many major economies has led to a buying spree. From Indonesia to Malaysia and even Singapore, these countries now have the world's deadliest fighter jets. Can Vietnam compete? Does Vietnam still have the capabilities to project power? Well, let's understand these by discussing their fighter jets. Before we understand their latest equipment, let us first understand the fighter jets that shaped the 20th century. A lot of Vietnam's fighter jets were mainly from the Soviet Union. They operated the MiG-17 Fresco to the MiG-21 Fishbed. These all started back in the North Vietnamese Air Force. When they initially started, they operated outdated and discarded equipment. Formed in 1959, their first combat aircraft was a 228 trainer flown by a defector from the Laotian Air Force. Officially known as the Vietnamese People's Air Force, or VPAF, they sent pilots to the Soviet Union and China for training in MiG fighters. However, they did not possess jet aircraft until February of 1964, when the Soviets supplied 36 MiG-15s and MiG-17s. The MiG fighters is short for Mikoyan Guryevik, which is a Soviet Union aerospace and defense manufacturer. But these MiGs were not stationed in Vietnam. They were placed in southern China for security reasons and did not move to a Vietnamese airbase known as Fukien Air Base near Hanoi until August of 1964. Beyond the MiG 15s and 17s, the VPAF received its first MiG 21 in November 1965. The MiG 21s had vastly improved the Air Force. They were a supersonic jet fighter and interceptor aircraft and had gone down in history as the most produced supersonic jet jet aircraft in aviation history. It had a maximum speed of over 2,174 kilometers per hour. According to Aero Corner, one piece of this jet fighter cost about $2 million in 1974. Beyond the MiG fighter jets and the Soviet Union, Vietnam also possessed several Chinese-made fighter jets. They operated the Shenyang J-5 and J-6. These aircrafts were built by the Shenyang Aircraft Corporation, but just like the older models of MiGs, their usage was eventually retired and replaced by the MiG-21s and newer models. Now, what we've discussed mostly is the equipment used by North Vietnam. South Vietnam during those years were close to the United States, hence they received U.S. fighter jets. One of these fighter jets is the Northrop F-5, which was famous back then for its design. It was assigned as a low-cost, lightweight, multi-role combat aircraft capable of Mach 1 speeds. Developed in the United States by Northrop, the F-5 achieved significant international success, with over half of the 2,246 produced aircraft serving in foreign militaries. More than 30 U.S. allied nations have operated the F-5 and many still use it today. They were operating in Vietnam under the 3rd Tactical Fighter Wing from Bien Ho and Da Nang Air Bases. The F-5Cs flew approximately 2,600 missions over Vietnam and Laos losing only one aircraft to enemy action. These aircrafts, specifically known as the modified F-5Cs, were transferred to the South Vietnam Air Force. Following the fall of Bien Hoa, some of these F-5Cs were integrated into the Communist North's Air Force and others were sent to the Soviet Union for further analysis. In terms of more modern equipment and the ones used today, all of the fighter jets deployed by the Vietnam Air Force are still hailing from Russia. The VPAF uses different aircrafts manufactured by the JSC Sukhoi Company. 
which is famous for designing and producing the Sukhoi aircraft. The most significant aircrafts used by VPAF are three different models. The first is the Sukhoi Su-22, which is the oldest model out of the other Sukhoi aircrafts. The Su-22 played a role during the Soviet Union era days. Until this very day, however, the Su-22 is still being used by Vietnam. In recent days, the Su-22 even crashed partly due to old age. It is an aircraft that is expected to be replaced before 2030. Then the other model, a newer one, is the Sukhoi Su-27. Now these have been acquired around the 1990s, to which they initially acquired 12 units of these. Six Su-27s were ordered in 1995 and six more in 1997. Unfortunately, two of the Su-27s were damaged during delivery and were subsequently traded for two Su-27PU interceptors. The acquisition of Su-27 Flanker facilitated the phase-out of Vietnam's MiG-21 aircraft, resulting in a more modern, though smaller fleet of significantly longer-ranged combat jets. The flankers, more than three times the size of the MiG-21 and with airframes decades ahead in design, represented a substantial technological advancement, making the transition a significant leap forward for the Vietnam People's Air Force. Fast forward to the 2000s, Vietnam transitioned to the more advanced Su-30, signing their first order for four Su-30 Mk-2 multi-role fighters in 2003. The increasing aggressiveness of China in the late 2000s prompted Vietnam to significantly boost spending on advanced air and naval equipment. Between 2009 and 2013, Vietnam signed three contracts, totaling $2.5 billion, to purchase 32 additional Su-30 Mk-2s. These Su-30s are the face of Vietnam's fighter jets. The Mk-2 is a multi-role fighter aircraft and is an enhanced version of the Su-30 Mkk. This variant offers superior combat capabilities against aerial, ground, and sea-based targets. Developed by Sukhoi in 2002 and manufactured by the Komsom Mosk on Emur Aircraft Production Association, the Su-30 Mk-2 is operational not just in Vietnam but also in Indonesia, China, and a number of other countries. What makes this aircraft famous is also its performance. The aircraft can reach a maximum speed of 2,100 km per hour and has an unrefueled range of 3,000 km. With in-flight refueling, its range extends to 5,600 km and it can reach a maximum altitude of 17,300 meters. As we saw throughout Vietnam's history, almost all of their significant fighter jets hailed from just one entity, the Soviet Union, and then Russia. But these are actually changing. Back in 2016, U.S. President Barack Obama had announced the full lifting of the U.S. embargo on sales of lethal weapons to Vietnam. The decision is part of the U.S.'s efforts to strengthen ties with Pacific allies amid China's territorial claims. However, Obama clarified that the decision was not aimed at China but was part of the ongoing process of normalizing relations with Vietnam. The arms embargo was partially lifted in 2014, and Vietnam had been advocating for its complete removal since. Now, what this simply means is that Vietnam now has the opportunity to diversify its defense procurement sources beyond Russia. The lifting of the embargo allows Vietnam to access advanced U.S. military technology, which could enhance its defense capabilities significantly. In recent years, we have seen several news reports about how Vietnam is planning to acquire these U.S.-made fighter jets. At first, several Vietnamese news reports said that the Su-57 acquisition was being planned for the late 2020s or early 2030s. These are, again, another model from Russia, but the news came out back in 2017. These would replace the Su-27 and the Su-22. However, in 2023, breaking news came out. The Biden administration had said that they were in talks with Vietnam for what could be the largest arms transfer in history between the former Cold War adversaries. And if concluded within the next year, this historic agreement could mark a significant milestone in the growing partnership between Washington and Hanoi. The proposed package includes the sale of advanced Lockheed Martin F-16 fighter jets to Vietnam. Washington said that they are going to offer the F-16 Block 7072 Viper variant. 
The Block 7072 offers unparalleled capabilities and will be operational in at least six countries, starting in the mid-2020s. Unfortunately, there are challenges with these. For the most part, the F-16 is extremely costly, approximately 50% more per unit than the Su-35, despite being about half its size. Its inability to integrate seamlessly with Russian weapon systems is another significant drawback. Additionally, the use of U.S. aircraft is tightly regulated, meaning the Vietnam People's Air Force would be unable to deploy these fighters to new bases or engage adversaries without the producer's permission. This restriction is expected to be a deal-breaker, as it does not apply to non-Western aircraft classes. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.